The Cincinnati River Valley exhibits many strange and unique geological features. But how exactly were these geological features formed? One word. Glaciers. Around 10,000 years ago, towards the end of the last ice age, glaciers and ice reached as far south as Loveland and Cincinnati and Dayton in Ohio. While constantly moving, glaciers do not simply recede and grow south, but in fact go through cycles of melt and snow build as they retreat and move forward. This cycle has many effects on local scales as well as global, including a complete resculpting of entire landscapes. As the ice travels, it often will pick up debris such as boulders and rocks and carry them long distances. The granite of northern America is much harder than our local limestone, so when the two grind together, groove formations are created. One example of this type of formation can be found at Kelly's Island, Ohio. It is the crushing weight of the glaciers which is responsible for the flat farmland that we see in Ohio today. Global glaciation also means that sea levels are lower. This means that land bridges can form between continents, such as the Bering Land Bridge between Russia and Alaska, and the Panama Land Bridge between North America and South America. Combined with the cyclical nature of glaciation, this allowed for the transfer of many species from continent to continent. These include horses and camels from North America, cats, elephants, and humans from Eurasia, and sloths, opossums, and even the, quote, terror birds from South America. However, these only found success in the southern states of America and through Mexico. The environment at the foot of a glacier is very similar to the tundra in the far north. So most of the Cincinnati area would have been a boreal forest, which would have become more and more sparse as you went north. During the glacial period, examples of local wildlife would have included mastodon, Colombian mammoth, giant ground sloth, saber-toothed cats, and giant beaver. All of these creatures could be found at the Big Bone Lick site in northern Kentucky. Around 1.4 million years ago, glaciers made their way into the valleys of the ancient Aragon River. This river flowed through the areas now occupied by Lakes Erie and Ontario. At the max depth, the valley was more than 200 feet deep. The ice would have diverted and dammed the water flow from the Uragan, as well as the Taes River in modern-day Illinois and Indiana. This created Tight Lake in southeastern Ohio. Both ancient rivers fed the lake and overflow drained into a small tributary of the Cumberland River. At some point, the ice dam broke and flooded that creek with water, creating the Ohio River as we know it today. Though our mastodons and big cats may be gone, the legacy of the Ice Age is responsible for sculpting the land that we call home. Many people have called this area home, from the first Paleo-Indians to the European colonists. However, it was the Seneca people and the Iroquois nation that gave the river and ultimately the state its name, Ohio, meaning beautiful. Well, in the merry month of May, no from me home, I started, left the girls and chew and nearly broken hearted, saluted father dear, kissed me darling mother, drank a pint of beer, me grief and tears, the smothered enough to reap the corn and leaf, for I was born, got a stout McCord to banish ghosts and goblets, a brand new pair of brogues to rock, the love of the bogs and frighten all the dogs on the rocky road, it's a double of one, two, three, four, five, hunt a hare and turn them down the rocky road, and all the ways to double and make for all the dogs, in mull and gather night. I rested and so weary started by daylight next morning late And there he took a drop of the pure to keep me heart and strength And that's the paddy's cure when there is um for drinking They hear the lassie smile laughing all the while At me curious style to touch a heart The problem they asked me was I hired and wages I required to lie Was almost tired of the rocky road to double